Hi everybody and big welcome to a CDH TV card review for Lauren of the Third Path, a mono blue creature, but also something of a group hug discussion. But let's begin with the card in question. It's a free mana cost 2, 1 legendary creature, human artificer with vigilance. And when the lower end of the third path enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. You don't need to destroy anything, but you have the option here. Then you have an activated tap ability. You and target opponent each draw a card. In other words, it's a white version of of Reclamation Sage and a tiny bit of Maglehorn. Well, Maglehorn is a little bit different, but still kind of the same. And I personally think it's great that White is getting some upgrades. Now, I actually think that Manglehorn might be the strongest one here because artifacts your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped, so it will initially destroy one artifact, but then it can sit there and make sure that artifact combos doesn't work. But all decks don't have access to green, so what to do? But lower on the third path is legendary, and that means that CZ Weathered Captain could tutor for it. This means that CZ suddenly have an amazing tool at destroying an underworld breach in instant speed if CC is a 4-4 and you have one mana of each color. And if we actually compare Manglehorn that can only destroy artifact, where Lauren could destroy enchantments as well, then you suddenly have a really nice way of dealing with rule of law and rhystic studies. I mean, there are enchantments in the game that people play that you sometimes want to get rid of. But I also speculate that Venota Joiner Forces might add Lauren into the deck as well as Lauren is a human that Venota could trigger into. As a commander there is no way anyone would actually play this. It is strictly there as a white version of Reclamation Sage and honestly I think the only deck that will probably add this is Cisse Weatherite Captain in the end. But it's not a bad card, it's absolutely a card any deck could add to it if they want something of the sort, a creature with an ETB effect and all that. But now let's talk about the group hug stuff here. Now first and foremost we're not playing it for the group hug ability, everything we want to have is on the upper section of the card and if it just stops there then everything I've said is still true and that's why you play it initially in Cisse. You see the tap ability there is an option you could use if you want to. When CDH was very new and well I had to convince people about the competitive EDH format and how it worked, I often have to explain that no it's not about combo it's about winning. So trying to win with a combo is the most common thing to do inside this format, but it's because it is the most efficient way of winning the game that people are doing that. If it isn't the most efficient way of winning, then combo wouldn't be the metagame. For example, some of you might have heard of Vampire the Masquerade the card game, the Eternal Struggle, which is a multiplayer card game built specifically for only multiplayer similar to EDH. I've actually played this game a tiny bit and I have to say I kinda like it. It has a lot of similarities with EDH and if you're an EDH hardcore fan this might be something for you. But there's one thing that is very different. The focus of this metagame is not combo. Now combo actually exists. I've seen two combos showcased for me on a theoretical level just showcasing their existence and how they would work but they are not the metagame of the format. No one is doing it because those combos in the end doesn't really get there because the interaction versus the combos are just better. In this game there's a lot of ways to collaborate amongst each other to interact with a single person that is trying to combo off and win. If someone is trying to become the player that just kills the entire table, that is the threat for the entire table and the entire table has resources to deal with that problem. In CDH though it's actually very hard to collaborate and work together sometimes. But this card actually opens up possibilities of doing that and I have to say I love it. A very common CDH scenario, someone is putting a combo on the stack, let's go fast as Oracle, but in this example it could be anything. Now someone has a mystical tutor, 
in their hand, but they don't have a way of drawing the card. They could tutor for force of will, but then they can't get it into their hand. But you have a solution to that. You have Lauren of the Third Group Hug Path. If someone is going to use resources, a force of will, a mystical tutor and some mana to interact with one of our opponents, of course we want to help them if they can't do it without our help. Like giving them a cadre here isn't really giving them a cadre, it is giving them the option to interact and do something we want them to do. There is actually another card already in existence, Arbor Elf, and I have seen players use this mana dork to untap opponents' lands so they can use the mana to interact with opponents. Now it all comes down to a very simple question. What do we want CDH to actually be? And do we want it to be a group hug game? No. Personally, I don't want that, but I want there to be collaboration potential. I really like the social engagement you have in commander games, also in competitive commander games, where people might work together in a teamwork effect trying to solve someone that is winning the game. But I actually think that this ability will be used more than just for the group hug effect, more than the collaboration effect, so to say. You see, sometimes some of your opponents are out of the game, or well, like they can't really do anything. They're about to die, or well, they are stuck. There are stacks which is in play that they can't interact with, and they aren't really in the game at all. And giving them a cadre while getting a cadre for yourself, that's actually sometimes okay. Activating this just to draw a card a little bit now and then here and there isn't something I recommend, quite the opposite. But if you have a thought behind why you're allowing yourself to give away a card to one of your opponents to get a card draw for yourself, then if you have a thought behind it, then it's okay. And of course, we should mention that the card draw effect is not a may for the opponent, it's a forced card draw effect. You and target opponent each draw a card. They can't do anything about it unless they have a stifle. And the thing with Fasas Oracle is that usually when you're winning with Fasas Oracle, you don't have a library. So you could actually use Lauren to interact with a Fasas Oracle. And that is amazing. And suddenly, Lauren is really good. I really like that it has Vigilance, that means it will synergize with Tumna and Darevi and still have the ability to activate and give a card to someone and give a card to yourself if you want to. For example, I really hate the fact that I can never attack with Duffy Voidwalker. He just sits there and does nothing. In the end, I really like this card. I want to see other versions of it, cards with similar effect. Once again, we're not playing it for the card ability down there, we're playing it for the ETB, destroy artifact or enchantment. And then the group hug thing here, or the collaboration thing here, or the kill a fast oracle combo, that's just a bonus. And that's what I want. I don't want group hug cards, cards that only do group hug. I want CDH good cards, individually great on their own, like this thing, with just added tiny bonus. It's absolutely about time that White is getting some cool stuff. That's it for me for this time. Hope you got inspired and that you liked the video. Take care guys, and I'll see you next time.